Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're looking at Zotax Z-Box EN760. I really have to sneeze, it is not working. I'm looking at the light and it's not working, so we're just going to roll with this and see what happens. This is the EN760 Z-Box. The Z-Box looks like this. If you're curious what a Z-Box is, it is basically an HTPC, a home theater PC, also known as a mini PC in Zotax branding. They've been making these for a few years now. I've seen them at PAX East for at least three years. and. Thus far, they haven't really made a gaming grade one. This is a gaming grade one, so I am told. The Z-Box is a custom form factor mini PC. It's a little bit smaller than mini ITX. It's got a CPU on board. It's got a GPU soldered on board. You install your own RAM and hard drive. They also sell one with those pre-installed. But let's, let's run through all the specs of this and then talk about why uh, I have not yet benchmarked this and what you can expect when I do benchmark it. So, for the specs, this, like I said, has a, a mobile GPU. It is using an NVIDIA 860M, which is one of their Maxwell GPUs. They actually have two 860Ms. One is based on Kepler, and one is based on Maxwell. This, to my knowledge, is the Maxwell GPU. And that is also why we're having issues with the drivers right now. The CPU is an i5, it's Intel, of course, i5-4200U, which is another uh, a laptop component. It operates natively at 1.6 gigahertz and turbo boosts up to 2.6 gigahertz. If you are wondering if that is slow, the answer is yes. 1.6 is pretty slow, but if turbo boost works like it should uh, and, and jumps up to 2.6 when gaming, then we'll be in okay shape because the GPU will make up for the rest, for the most part, for most games. Obviously, there are some games that will be more CPU bound than others, but the, the Z-Box right now does not function with NVIDIA's 337.88 drivers. So unfortunately, I can't benchmark it yet. I do have benchmarks coming, but I'm just waiting on Zotac to get back to me with the updated driver uh, compatibility. So the main issue here is that right now it's running on 320.6, I wanna say, which is, it's a little bit old at this point. And unfortunately, if I benchmark on 320.6 with the 860M against all of our other video cards, you're gonna see a huge disparity that doesn't actually exist in hardware. It's entirely on the driver side because all of the other cards I benchmarked on 337.88. And you, I wanna use Watch Dogs for the bench, but it's not gonna work without the newest drivers because of a million reasons I've discussed if you have seen my diatribe on Watch Dogs. So uh, we are waiting for the benchmarks on that, but we can at least look at the internals today and get a, an overview of what the Z-Box is. So this is targeted as a gaming unit. In terms of I.O., let me just read off the back here. We have four USB 3.0 ports. There are two on the back, one on the side slash top, however you look at it, and then one on, on the opposite side from the back, which I suppose would be the front. <laughs> so that's what we have for the uh, USB I.O. There is no USB 2. It's all three. There are two 3.5 millimeter jacks for out and input. There's a 4-in-1 card reader, so that includes your SD, SD, HC, SD, XC, all of those things. And then we have uh, Wi-Fi antennas included with the Z-Box, so it actually has its own wireless card internally. You don't need to buy a USB stick for wireless, which is good because we only have four USB ports. And then we have, uh, like I said, wire wireless receiver. There's a power button, antenna connector for... Uh, more antennas, there's an optical spoof, <laughs> which is one of my favorite words to say. Uh, so that, that is an optical reader for uh, audio, of course, if you want to use it in a proper HTPC setup where you would have high quality speakers. Two RJ45 Ethernet ports, and then we've got a DVI port, an HDMI port, another antenna connector for the second wireless antenna, and DC uh, power input. So it actually connects to an adapter that connects to the wall. So it it's, doesn't have an internal power supply, it's actually external. That's how they can make this so small. And the unit that I have here is the, uh, I believe it is the EN760, whereas the more expensive unit is the EN760 Plus. So the difference between them is the 760 does not come with RAM or a hard drive pre-installed, the 760 Plus does. And the pre-installed RAM is one stick of eight gigabytes at 1600 megahertz. The hard drive pre-installed is a one terabyte drive at 5400 RPM, so I would advise you strongly to buy this model, which has nothing pre-installed, buy your own RAM, buy your own SSD, and go from there. This unit ships at $550, should be available later this month, 
and the Pro model with the RAM and drive ships at 700. I yeah, it ships at 700. So not the best value if you're capable of installing your own drive and RAM. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now because it's pretty darn easy. And uh, and then we'll get to the benchmarks as soon as the drivers are compatible with this device. But for today, we're just going to install everything. Things are pretty simple here. Looking internally, we have, of course, the board. There's a giant heatsink with a small, what looks to be perhaps a, uh, maybe, I don't know if that's 60 or 80 millimeters, but it's a small fan on the GPU. And then next to that, we have, of course, the wireless adapter, and you've got a port for your drive. And underneath that, you can remove that one screw holding in the drive, uh, drive sled, we'll call it. Underneath that is where the RAM is installed. This is actually laptop RAM. It is so dim RAM. Uh, and you can basically take it out of any laptop if you have one, or uh, of course just buy new RAM. And it will take two slots. So for maximum efficacy, you can fill both of those slots. Right now I've got some, uh, some pretty mediocre Kingston laptop RAM in here just for testing purposes. Pop your RAM in just like a laptop, pop the SSD into the sled, install it. It will connect to the ports very cleanly. Do not force anything because you'll break it. And then just close it off. And that's that's really all there is to it. So at this point, we install an OS, we install some games, we hope that the drivers are updated, and then play, and, uh, and I'll have a benchmark for you shortly. So uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel for that. And of course, check the website for full information on this product as well as the other Zotac ones. And I will see you all next time. Peace.